Amen. Isn't it good to know in your heart that it is well with your soul this morning? Amen. There's nothing more precious than that to know. Whatever happens in my life, whatever happens in your life, if you're a child of God, it is well with your soul. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Amen. What a good-looking crowd we have this morning. You're better looking than the crowd we had last Sunday. <laughs> Glad you're here. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, isn't it good to see the house of God being filled up? Oh, praise God. I just... Uh, I know the heart of the Father is delighted in heaven when he looks down and sees this house full Sunday after Sunday. For those of you who are visiting with us, we're taking a journey. We began a journey last Sunday morning uh, in the book of Revelation. We're going to be in the book of Revelation for quite a while. Uh, this morning we want to take a look at uh, two of the churches in the book of Revelation, and you'll find those uh, in the the second and third chapter of the book of Revelation, a section of each of those chapters we're going to combine together this morning and take a look as we begin to think about the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor that uh, the Lord revealed to John on the Isle of Patmos and said, John, I want you to write everything that you have seen and everything that you have heard. I want you to write it down and send it to the churches. Send it to the churches. I really believe that these love letters uh, from God are very, very pertinent to the times in which we live today. Look around you. Look carefully or you will miss the signs of the times and you will miss some very important things that are taking place in our world that the Bible literally talks about in God's precious Word. Uh, I'm coming to understand more about his revelation than I've ever understood in, in all of the years in my ministry. And I thank God for that. And I, I humbly uh, share that with you this morning. Uh, I love the fact that these are letters from God. Isn't it neat that you hold in your hand letters from God this morning? As a matter of fact, the entire Word of God is letters from God to you and I. And especially... In this day in which we live, I think we as churches really need to hear what God has to say to the church in this age in which we're living. Uh, and these, uh, these letters reveal several wonderful things. Uh, first of all, they reveal that God sees and cares about us as individuals. God is very personal. He is not one who is far removed above this earth and far removed from your circumstances of your life, but he is intimately concerned about what concerns you. And so he sees you wherever you are, and he cares about you. And so these letters reveal that. And it came at a very crucial time in the life of John, the apostle of Jesus Christ, and the life of the early church. Uh, and so he sees us, and he cares about us. And John will unfold that in these seven letters uh, as we begin to go through them. Uh, uh, then also it reveals that he sees us as sharing our lives with other believers in the church of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what we're doing this morning. As we've gathered here in this church, we come to share our lives with each other as believers in Jesus Christ. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That we can just be at home in God because we're family. Because we're family. And these letters to the seven churches reveals that. It also reveals that, that the issues then are the same issues about which he would speak to us today. Same issues. They haven't changed. Haven't changed. Same problems then, same problems today. The same issues then are the same issues today. And we'll discover that in these seven letters, the form of each of these seven letters is like the others. They are the same. The content of each letter, though, is different. The form is the same, but the content is different. And that we need to take note of that this morning uh, as we think about these seven letters. Uh, we're going to deal, first of all, in chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, verses 1 through 7, with the church uh, at, uh, at Ephesus. Before we do that, there's an all overriding theme that I want you to take note, if you're taking notes this morning. <coughs> Here is the overriding theme of all these letters. God calls us to be people of passion. As Christians, he calls us, and as churches, he calls us to be people of passion. That's very, very important. Uh, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, and I'll just uh, say a few things and we'll get into these letters in just a moment. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, uh, 
there were some people debating with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, Pharisees, religious leaders of the day. And one of the scribes listened to all of this, and he moved from the crowd, and he comes to Jesus in Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. And he says, Lord, I've got a question for you. And the Lord says, what is it? And he says, which is the greatest of all the commandments? Which is the greatest of all the commandments? And the Lord says, the Bible says, hear, O God. Hear, O Israel, that the Lord God is one God. And that you are to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And he says, by the way, the second commandment is like unto it. And you are to love your neighbor as yourself. Now think about that for just a moment. We're going to find that these letters are letters calling God's people and calling the church to be a church and a people of passion. Uh, You can't be passionate about something that you don't believe in. And you can't be passionate toward anybody that you don't believe in. It's very important. Very important. Uh, If you don't have a passion for God, guess what? You will not have compassion for others. If you don't have a passion for God, you will not have compassion for others. The Bible admonishes us to love everybody didn't say you had to like everybody. There's a lot of people I don't like. How about you? (laughs) I'm being honest as your pastor this morning. (laughs) I'm confessing what you don't want to confess out loud right now. (laughs) There are some folks, and you've already thought about them in your mind, (laughs) that you just don't like. You just don't care for. Do you know that's all right? As long as you love them. (laughs) As long as you love them. For you who are married, let me give you a word of caution. You may not like everything about your partner, but you sure have to love your partner. Can you say amen? You sure have to love your partner. Amen. God is calling us to be people of passion. But the passion begins with God. If I'm not passionate with God, how can I be compassionate toward you? My my heart has got to be passionate toward my God if I'm going to have compassion for my fellow man. The world needs to see a person of compassion. And a person who is really passionate. I love passionate people. (laughs) And the world really needs to see a church of passion. A church of passion. Well, let's wade right in. Okay. Chapter 2. Beginning in verse 1 of the book of Revelation. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write... These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. The lampstands are the churches and the stars are the pastors. Here is what John says, that God says, I know your works. I know your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say that they're apostles and are not and found them to be liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. You've lost your passion. You've lost your passion. And he says, verse 5, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent and do the first